And now we'll finish up and very quickly show the third of the three inventory policies that are reactive to where your on-hand inventory is. And this is called the min-max policy. And it has theoretical advantages over the other two because it's more adaptive, more agile than the others. And so it's a very common policy. It's a smart thing to do if you can pull it off. So we'll make the same sort of picture of the dynamics of inventory versus time and we'll just show how it's different in one detail. And that detail is how much you order. With the RQ, there was a reorder point and a fixed order quantity. With the min-max system, the min is the same as the reorder point. There's a fixed level at which you go ahead and order more. The difference is, instead of having a fixed number, like ordering 15 units every time, you have a random number, which is like the first policy, where you, um, you try to order up to a maximum level. So it's a kind of a composite of the first one and the second one. So we'll draw the picture again of daily operations. Here we have the on-hand inventory as a function of time. And there is a kind of a red line here, which is now called the min. And we have now something up here called the max. So you can see we had a line like this with the periodic review. And we had a line like this for the second, the RQ system. So let's imagine we start off at the top. And again, randomly, demand will arrive and push us down. Maybe there's a large order, maybe it's quiet, and we get another large order. And at this point, we've crossed the min, so that's our signal to get more. And again, there's going to be a lead time. So there'll be some lead time before that replenishment arrives. But in the meantime, we will still continue to have demand of some random intervals and random quantities. Let's say it looks like that. Now we get a replenishment, but how much did we order? We were here. We want to get to the max. So we would be ordering this much to fill in that gap. So this much would come in at this point and we go up to here. Now we don't quite get up to the max again because in the meantime our pocket has been picked by the, the continuing demand. But this will continue to go along like this and maybe, uh, maybe we have some big demands and we end up in negative territory. At this point when we went through we say well we need that much so after lead time that much will come in and we get back here above the max and we continue on. So the only essential difference is when we hit the reorder point which is now called the min we try to get back up to the max so we have a random order quantity at each period. And again the same logic applies. You can use the software to simulate say a year or a hundred years of operation with a choice Maybe you say max equals 50 and min equals 15, and you see what happens. What does that imply for holding costs, for ordering costs, for shortage costs? And if you add those together, you get the total operating cost. of that policy with these choices and you also have some idea of how often you end up stocking out and that goes to the availability so you get back on your universal trade-off curve of cost and availability and you've seen that if the min is 15 and the max is 50 that's where you are you can look again at say a max of 60 and you'll move to another place. It'll probably be more expensive, but more availability. 70, and so forth. And you can sketch out this curve 
and then management has to make a judgment about what's a comfortable, a tolerable place to be because you're sort of drawn and quartered, you're being pu pulled toward availability and pushed away from cost and you find a balance point that at least temporarily, maybe for this quarter, serves the company well. So that's the way modern computer software for supply chain analytics can look at a demand history of an item and figure out if you manage it in a certain way, one of these three choices with two values set in the knobs, the parameters, what's going to happen? You don't have to guess and you've got the information you need to make an informed management decision about what to do next. And it all is built on a model of the demand process. And complications are possible. For instance, we've always shown these lead times as if they were fixed. The lead time itself can be random. And our operational analytics software can look at your ordering history from all of your suppliers and, under, and give you a picture of what that randomness is. Maybe they usually give you a, a response in 14 days, but sometimes it's 25 days, and once they did it with 10 days, you can take that randomness in count in account too. So the demand randomness and the supply randomness can all be incorporated in the analysis. And you end up not having to guess, but understanding where you are now and how things will get better or worse if you make certain changes in the way you manage the inventory. So I hope this has clarified some of the basic dynamics of day-to-day -day inventory and how we can use those dynamics to lead to better business decisions. And I hope to see you again when we talk about more such topics. Thanks.